this interesting fly, uh, very Newfoundland fly, it's called the Dirty Bomber. And it, it, it's supposed to look like this. It's, it's one of the most wild and woolly flies I've ever seen in my life. Um, it just, it, this is the way it's tied. It's, it's, it's supposed to look kind of crazy. Fun, fun fly to tie because it, it's so wild, you really, really don't have to be too neat with it. Anyway, starts off with nice big uh, this is a, uh, a size six bomber hook and nice long shank. Because of the long shank, you really want to make sure that that's well, well secured in the jaws of your tying vise. And here I'm, I'm using some, it's a, a gel spun thread. I uh, really like the gel spun for, for spinning deer hair like this. Now, interesting thing about gel spun and deer hair uh, is that it's all very slippery and so so is this metal hook shank and so one of the things that i'm going to do here is really make an effort to get things locked into place we want to spin the deer hair but we obviously don't want to spin this this um, calf tail tail and the whole back half of the fly when we're spinning the deer hair so one of the things that i found really helpful is to just make sure that that things are locked down super super well i may be a little overboard here but what i'm going to do is put some super glue on there wrap through it and the, the pressure of those wraps help to set the the super glue and i'm going to do this several times actually now the the tail on this as you can see in the example is is calf tail but they've cut it off and as a fly tire I, I, that's going to be very hard for me to do i, I really like leaving calf tail long but uh, this this is the way they do it so uh, this is kind of a first for me uh, taking perfectly good calf calf tail and snipping it off square uh, give a little counterclockwise spin as if you're looking down on it with my bobbin helps that thread to jump rearward and before I get too far I'm gonna take my super glue put another real ample drop on there and wrap through it just to make sure that that stuff can't spin and isn't going anywhere all right and again, it's gonna be super hard for me to do. I really wanna leave that calf, calf tail natural, but tradition is to snip it off. Okay. Um, that didn't hurt so bad. Anyway, next, next material that gets tied in is chartreuse deer belly hair. Nice, nice and hollow, flares well, spins well. You know, it, oftentimes it's desirable to spin on a bear hook shank be, because it's slippery but it, it's really not, not essential. You can kind of get it to spin around just about anything. Gonna cut a real nice big clump. About the rear, I don't know, what is it? Rear third of the fly is chartreuse deer hair, and the front is more of a gray deer hair. Uh, I don't happen to have any of that, so I'm gonna use white for now. Lay the deer hair one light turn, take a second turn, and just as you can see, it just spins around real nicely there. So why am I tying thread through? So I, I use this little tool. It's just a hollowed out plunger style hackle plier. Helps me compress the, and get those that deer hair held back. I can bring my thread right out in front. I, Again, just don't, particularly with this fly, don't sweat the neatness. It, it really doesn't matter. In fact, it's better if it looks kind of all over the place. So another clump of deer, deer here. Try to get, like I said, about a quarter to a third of the rear part of the hook covered with the chartreuse. Nice 
spin around there. I might go one more clump of that. Yeah, you can probably see here, I'm not, I'm not combing out the deer hair. You certainly can if you want, but I'm, I'm just going, going fast. Just cleaning it out a little bit. Nice big clump. You know, deer hair is much thicker down at the base than it is up at the top and, and hollower. So I'm going to try to use the lower part of that clump and once, twice spin that, just get a little more hollow hair in there, a little more, a little more float to the pattern. And here, this is another reason for really locking that tail in place with the super glue. I'm going to take my little tool here and just force all that deer hair back really compress it. Might have gone a little overboard on the on the length of that chartreuse for this fly, but we'll just jam it back there. We're still looking pretty good. I think that's okay. So I'm going to switch over to white. Um, the, the fly does really look good with this, this gray deer hair front part on it. Uh, but like I said, I, I don't have any of the gray. We'll just go with white. I don't, really don't think uh, the salmon are going to care all that much. You can use deer body hair for these, but the, the hair from the belly of the deer is much more hollow flares a little better and uh, helps the, the fly to float a little bit more. You can see how it really wants to spin around that hook shank. And I'm going to push it back, use my little tool to compress it. If you want to, just keep the tool in place, drop a couple of wraps in there so they're right in tight by that deer hair. With any of these kind of bomber style flies, there are a myriad of ways uh, to tie them. And I, I, I know I don't tie in a very traditional manner here, but it, it, it works for me. And that, that's what a lot of fly tying is about. You know, they're, they're really, I don't believe anyway, that there are any really hard and fast rules. What, whatever, whatever works for you, and you know your your level of tying ability the materials you have uh, really whatever it takes to kind of get the job done and, and uh, i wouldn't get too hung up on this being the absolute technique that you have to use kind of uh do your own thing in many cases so we've really filled most of that hook shank up with deer hair I do need to leave some room up here because I have to tie in both another clump of calf body hair as well as a hackle. So I am going to leave just a little bit of room there. Now, Gonna just use my tool to dump a few half hitches right in front. And then this gel spun, it does not cut well with scissors. Uh, a razor blade is, is much more effective at cutting it. Cause I, I do like to, to trim these things outside of my tying vise, preferably over a trash can or all right, I, I just first, just big, just hack at it, you know? Cut it into a little, just so you can see what you're doing, you know? Get that, that big, those natural hair points off of there. And then start getting in and, and working to that final sort of cigar shape if you will, tapers front and back and, and uh, 
a little fatter in the middle. Really wanna, when I just realized, probably the most important step of all, I'm gonna take care of it right here and now. In Newfoundland, they're you, barbless hooks only. So we are absolutely gonna mash the barb really well. I usually do that before I put it in my tying vise, but. Do want to snip that bottom part off nice and close want to keep that that hook gap as open as possible give the salmon every chance to get hooked that we can now i'm just kind of going around and and shaping taking that square down into more of a cylinder. Some people will put little uh, painter's tape around the, the tail of the fly here, just, just so when you're doing this, you don't snip your tail off. But I'm gonna roll the dice here today. Try not to stab yourself in the process. So, this, like I said, this fly is supposed to be kind of uh, haphazard looking, if you will. And I, I don't want to neaten it up too much. I do want to clear an ample spot up by the eye for some calf tail and a, and a hackle. All right, we're getting there. Get a bad feeling I made that too neat. So I was using white gel spun before. I'm gonna replace that with a black, smaller diameter thread here. Get that thread started. Make sure it's anchored really, really well. Snip that. I am going to take that down just a little bit more. Remove some of that volume. Trim that back. There we go. Okay, kind of a tricky part with this calf tail. Is sneaking a nice ample clump. Let's see this. That's a pretty ample clump of calf <laughs> calf tail snuck in there. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get that be able to go that big. We'll give it a try. I'm gonna put a little tying wax on my thread. This gives it some bite. I'm just gonna see if I can't. Get a nice few wraps around there and put some pressure on it. Get that to, to tighten up. Pull it up in front. Take a few wraps around there and then really lock it down in place like that. I'm actually gonna Tuck a few more wraps under there just to get that to prop up a little bit. If I could, there we go. So nice and, and wild and woolly, just like the original. Next step is the hackle. And I'm using just a, a little saddle hackle here if you get the strung stuff, that'll work. All those feathers that you never end up using on anything else, you can use here. Big, webby, uh, schlappen will work. Uh, it's just just kind of the stuff that, that doesn't get used and uh, works perfect for this fly. 
Gonna strip the stem off, take a little more from the, the top edge there. Just to ensure that it wraps correctly. Get that really, really well secured. Don't want that pulling out when you go to wrap it. Actually gonna wrap back on that stem. Snip that excess stem off close. Now, what I'm gonna do, pull the feather forward and I cord up my tying thread, give it a clockwise spin as if I'm looking down on it. And then I'm gonna take my tying thread under quite a bit of pressure and just sneak it, sneak it in there through the deer hair and hopefully we're not gonna see any or much uh, black wraps in there, maybe a little at the back. Then we can take the hackle feather, and I really want, want to get a nice wrap up front, and then open spiral wraps back, sinking that hackle stem right into the spun deer hair like that. When I reach my tying thread, we use it to anchor the, the stem. Anchor it really well back there. You can snip or hopefully just break, break the hackle stem off. Fluff that out a little bit. Now what I'm gonna to try to do is take my tying thread and wind it back through the deer hair bury the tying thread in the deer hair, but cross wrap over that delicate hackle stem as I go. Just zigzagging back and forth, trying not to trap too many hackle fibers. And at the same time, really get down into the deer hair. Okay. Now, two choices, you can whip finish behind behind that wing, or I'm gonna try anyway. I'm gonna pull that wing back and get some wraps around just behind the hook eye. A good strong place to have your, your, your final wraps is behind the hook eye. Got a little bit of stuff clogging the eye, which I don't want, just snip that out. Good to go. And then a nice big drop. Important to get some head cement on this one. There's a lot of stuff that's tied in right behind the eye and, and you really wanna saturate those wraps with some head cement. And always a good idea just to make sure that none of that head cement is stuck down in there. Just, just use your bodkin and clean that eye out. And so we're, there we go. That is the dirty bomber. Uh, kind of kind of a crazy looking fly, but I, I am told that they work work like a charm here here in Newfoundland. Uh, neat stuff. Mm -hmm.